So at least three times now, Don Bradley has given this speech called New Discoveries About Joseph Smith and Plural Marriage. He presented his new discoveries at the fair conference. He also got together with Ward Radio, and he got together with Stephen Jones and gave the same speech. Well, I got together with Care Burrell yesterday, and we did an episode on my response to it. And today I'm going to give you a much shorter version. So Don Bradley is trying to rearrange Joseph Smith's plural wives so that the first women he marries in Nauvoo are pregnant and married, or recently widowed, as was the case of his sister-in-law, Agnes Coolbrith. In Don Bradley's view, this rearrangement of pregnant and already married wives changes Joseph Smith's motives away from sex and to obedience to God's commandments and then he raise up seed by taking other men's children in the eternities. His argument is this. Joseph Smith and Louisa Beeman, the first of his Nauvoo wives, were married in Joseph Bates Noble's house, which Don Bradley says wasn't built until after he moved to Nauvoo in September of 1841. And if the couple was indeed married in his house in the spring, then the date of their marriage would actually be April of 1842, which would make Louisa Beeman the eighth plural wife in Nauvoo instead of the first. But let's take a closer look at where Joseph Bates Noble was. According to a minute book, Joseph Bates Noble shows up in a high council meeting in March of 1840 in the town of Montrose, which is right across the river from Nauvoo. So he's literally just a ferry right away. And in August of 1841, Joseph Bates Noble shows up at a conference in Zarahemla, where he was called as a counselor to Bishop Elias Smith. The background of Zarahemla is kind of a long story, but all you need to know is that it's north of Montrose. After finding that source, I found another one for the church offices, and that Joseph Bates Noble was actually called as the bishop's counselor in December of 1840. Additionally, on July 15th of 1841, Joseph and Emma sold Joseph Bates Noble four blocks of land in Nauvoo. One of the deeds says he paid $5,000 for it, while another record says that he purchased it for only $3,000. Either way, by 1841, he owns land in Nauvoo. Because bricks took so long to make, the people would often build log cabins first while their homes were being built. And this could have easily been the case for Joseph Bates Noble in 1841. In Joseph Bates Noble's biography, without a date attached to it, it reads, We soon commenced to move our families up the river about 50 miles, to a place called Commerce, afterwards Nauvoo. Quite a number of us crossed the Mississippi River, to the Iowa side, to avail ourselves of some log cabins that had formerly been used as barracks for the soldiers at a place called Montrose. But let's keep going. So Joseph Bates Noble is the one who performed the ceremony for Joseph and Louisa. But where were they actually married? According to William Law in the Nauvoo Expositor, which was published in 1844, three years after Joseph and Louisa married, he says that they were married on the banks of the Mississippi River. And Apostle Franklin D. Richards in 1869, he says that they were married under an elm tree in Nauvoo. And he even says that the bride was disguised in a coat and hat. And in 1876, Annaliza Webb Young gives us more information. Not only does she say that they were married on the banks of the Mississippi, but that they did it in the cover of night. And in his diary, Charles Lowell Walker in 1883, he says that they were married in a grove near Main Street. And he says that he gets his information from Apostle Erastus Snow. However, in 1869, Joseph Bates Noble was asked where they were married, to which he responds that they were married at his house. Except that during the Temple Lot case, which happened 50 years after the marriage, Joseph Bates Noble gives a different answer. He says, I told you the other day that Louisa Beeman was married at my house, across the river from Nauvoo in 1840. He says, I must have been mistaken and did not understand the question. Well, I will settle down on the date that Louisa Beeman was married in 1841 or 1842. So of all 17 accounts that I found on where Joseph and Louisa were married, 12 of them were silent on the matter, four of them said that they were married outdoors, and only one of them said that they were married in Joseph Bates Noble's house. And of those 17 accounts, eight of them don't give any date to the marriage, two said 1840, six of them said 1841, only one of the accounts says 1842, and Joseph Bates Noble sounds very confused. And like Don Bradley pointed out, Joseph Bates Noble had a terrible memory. So just to summarize, Joseph Bates Noble was indeed in the area in 1840 and 1841. And it is more likely that the marriage took place outside, which makes the point of Joseph Bates Noble's house moot. Also, I will still point Don Bradley to the histories of Zina Huntington and Mary Elizabeth Rollins, the only two confirmed pregnant women that Joseph married, to show that Joseph Smith was not hesitant when he married these women. According to her granddaughter, Joseph proposed to Zina before she married Henry. And according to Mary Elizabeth Leitner herself, Joseph approached her when she was 12 and said that someday he would take her as his wife. Also, the timing of Orson Hyde viewing the meteor shower, right around the same time that Joseph Smith is visited by an angel with a flaming sword when he proposes to Zina, doesn't really make any sense when you consider Mary Elizabeth Rollins' testimony that Joseph Smith told her that the angel visited him three times between 1834 and 1842, unless only one of those occasions was special. Honestly, that whole part doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. So Don Bradley, if you're hearing this, I look forward to seeing how you incorporate all of this into your presentation. And I'd still like to see your source on men not doing the deed with their pregnant wives. Also, my dad adores you. He loved your book, The Lost 116 Pages, so much that he even bought me a copy.